You mentioned in your book about self-healing and using your lucid dreams for going beyond the, the pleasure pain. Because, I mean, to be honest with you, I still fall into that of just going around bonking it, you know. <laughs> um, I, you know, I'm sorry. I put my hands up to that. Um, but uh, they, they, they often say that's the lowest form of lucid dreaming is just to you know, <laughs> indulge in your sexual uh, you know, <laughs> fantasies. But um, yes, one of the things that, I mean, I can relate to that because it, I, I kept having a similar dream pattern where a recurring dream where I often get chased and I still get it now to a certain degree. But that's if there is a recurring dream, it's I'm, I'm getting chased. And I remember reading in your book, you know, to stop, turn around and face this person. And at the time, the lucid dream is absolutely terrifying because all the fears are still there, all the emotions are still there. I, I know I could still get hurt and feel the pain, but I'm just like, well, you know, I'm just going to do it. And it takes a lot of courage, I have to be honest. It, to, to turn. Sometimes I don't. I actually keep running, even though I know I'm lucid. But most of the times, I'll turn around and I'll confront this thing. And in the end, it goes from being like a balaclava, you know, like or terrorist type, you know, a, a monster or whatever it is just completely turns into a, a, a teddy bear, into like a puppy dog, you know, like a real, and just confronting me, they're, they're often just suddenly every, all the, there's, there's no aggression there and that just all, the, all their kind of power is taken away, if you like. But I did have one dream character where it, it confronted me and it was sort of, it, it was like raging. It was, and I realized it was me raging. And I, and I said, what do you represent? And it said anger. Um, and so I kind of, I can't remember what I did. I think I even slowly teared it apart. I know, I know sometimes I've hugged it, but it just felt, I, I went with my instincts and I just like tore it apart like paper. And actually I woke up and it just, this, this, this anger that I'd been hanging on to just had actually gone completely. And I realized I'd actually healed. I'd, I'd been hanging on to something for a long time, like a grudge and I'd completely dissipated it in that moment, you know, and that's all uh -huh. thanks to your, and that, you know, that's, that's thanks to sort of your uh, lucid dreaming um, uh, uh, invites within your book, you know, and I think that's absolutely brilliant, you know, and I don't know if you've got any other stories of, of sort of having similar experiences or healing in that way that you'd like to share, uh, Robert? Oh, you, you, you know, um, the, I think this is really such a critical area because uh, um, a lot of lucid dreamers report like you do that they're being chased by somebody and then they realize, oh, I've had this chase nightmare before, but they're still so freaked out, you know, they go running in fear. Still and freaked screaming. out, yes. <laughs> and, 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 and so, so, so it definitely happens, but if you can turn and face the feared object, um, it, it's really interesting what will happen at that moment because, because sometimes when you just turn and see it, then you realize that it's not so threatening after all. Yeah. And that by not looking at it, uh, this is kind of what Carl Jung would call the shadow. The shadow is the denied, ignored, repressed aspects of the self. And oftentimes they're in a shadow's position right behind you. And so that's why they're chasing you and stuff because you're not looking at them, you're just running from them. You're, you're just denying them. But, but when you finally turn and look, and uh, the, the, then oftentimes you realize that, oh yeah, it is that anger uh, that, that I'm not allowing myself to uh, acknowledge, or it's whatever it is. But but one thing uh, that this has really been important for in, in my work with people, because I, I work with people from around the world, a lot of times people tell me, oh, they know it's demons, or it's spiritual beings who are trying to suck their life force. And, and some of them are just dead on certain, you know, that they're being harassed in, at some deep spiritual level, you know, by these evil things. And, and I tell them, look, if you want to see that it's created by your mind, then do this. The next time you're being chased and you realize it's a lucid dream, turn around, face the thing, and whatever it lacks, I want you to send it. So if it's full of anger, send it peace. Mm. If it's full of hate, send it love. If it's full of whatever, send it the opposite. And normally as you do, as you send the, the hateful thing, love, 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 it'll start to shrink down. It'll become a little boy or a little girl. It'll give you a hug. Sometimes if you accept it enough, and this is what the really wild thing, if you accept it enough, then it'll burst into light. And that light will come into your body because you're actually the projector of it. You're projecting that mental energy out there and it's being formed into a form that you can relate to. But when you accept it, then it returns to its natural state, which is kind of this light energy that comes back into you. And, and when you see that happen a few times, it, it'll change your whole relationship um, with uh, 
antagonistic dream Absolutely. figures. I mean, I actually had that when um, I, I had a, a, a guy chasing me in the dream. And so I went up to him and I just offered it love. And it just, yeah, something kind of melted into me, you know, kind of just the whole tension just went away. But then again, it happened again. Yeah. And I offered it love, but it remained the same antagonistic uh, being. But here's the difference. I was using this, this invitation of love from a place of fear, if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. So I hadn't completely surrendered into the love. I was just going, I love you. <laughs> you know, and there was this, there was a part of my awareness was like that didn't come from that true authentic place. It was like, it was like a little little shield, you know. And so I love that, that that place of love has to come from the authentic place, not just not just smoke. not just a, a needed yeah, place in the absolutely. moment to escape the feared object. Absolutely. Yeah, and and you'll see that that that's the beautiful thing about lucid dreaming. You know, it, let's say in waking life you have a therapist. You can lie to your therapist. You can lie to your wife. You can lie to your friends, your mates, whomever. You, you, you can, you know, just BS them and, and yeah. lie to them. But, but in the dream state, it, you can't lie. It, it'll, it'll, ref, it'll reflect back to you the actual situation. So if there's a little bit of fear in that love, it's going to get reflected back. And, and, uh, and, and that's, that's the beautiful thing about lucid dreaming. It, it, it just reflects back perfectly. But but I, I want to tell you how this can be really powerful in uh, reclaiming your personal energy. Um, so so I, I I had this lucid dream one night. I, I'm sitting in a farmhouse uh, at a kitchen table, and, and it's kind of like down in the southern U.S. And the farm wife puts beans on my plate, and I look around and I think, wait a second, I don't live in a farmhouse, you know, I, I don't live in the south. And then I realize, oh, this is a lucid dream. And so one of my rules is that you should always go to the area of the most energy mm. in the lucid dream. So I could feel behind me, there's all this energy. And I turn around and it's this young black woman and I pick her up and I put her right in front of me and I ask her an open-ended question, who are you, who are you? And she responds, I am a discarded aspect of yourself. And I think, well, what the hell do you do with a discarded aspect of yourself? And that's when I realized that if she's discarded, she needs to be accepted. Mm -hmm. And so from my heart, I just keep sending her acceptance and she keeps shrinking, shrinking, shrinking until I totally accepted her. And then she became colored light that came into my body. And it was so energetic that I, I woke up uh, from this lucid dream. About a week later, I'm, I'm thinking, Every day that week, I'd been thinking, I should try to write that book on lucid dreaming, the project I discarded a year and a half ago because it was so difficult. Mm. And that's when I realized, oh, crap, that's what that woman was. She said she was the discarded aspect. She was, all, she was a representation of all that energy I'd put into the, my first attempt to write a book. And I'll tell you, once, once I realized what all that energy was about, uh, it made it much easier to begin this process of writing my very first book. So, so again, when you, when you accept these oppositional figures, when you accept these figures that are behind you and, and that you're ignoring, you can reclaim their energy and, and, and really, uh, really move to a new level of kind of empowerment and, and personal growth.